Is there another Earth-like planet out there? The short answer is maybe. By now, we know of thousands of extrasolar planets, including ones that are thought to be similar in size to the Earth and orbit within the habitable zone of their stars. According to the theories of formation for our solar system, we would expect to find small rocky planets near their stars and giant planets farther away. However, that's not always what we observe. In fact, early on in planetary detection, most of the planets we have found were the giant planets very close to their stars. We refer to these as hot Jupiters. To understand why this is, recall how extrasolar planets are detected. In one detection method, the planet tugs on its star gravitationally. The more massive the planet is, the greater the tug. In the second method, we rely on a planet transiting across the star. This blocks out some of the light. The larger the planet, the greater the dimming. This introduces some observational bias to our detection. Larger planets are detected more often because they are easiest to detect. Planets close to their stars are easier to detect as well because they have shorter periods. So how did these hot Jupiters come about in the first place? One proposed explanation is that these hot Jupiters formed differently than our solar system. When a star forms with a dense disk, then gravitational instabilities within the disk can form a giant planet rapidly before the star ignites and creates the frost line. The inner parts of the disk being more dense, they are more likely to form giant planets this way. An alternate explanation is planetary migration. In this hypothesis, our understanding of the condensation theory is correct and giant planets form far away from the Sun. However, if the disk has enough material, then the giant planet can throw some of it outwards while its own orbit migrates inward. Computer simulations show that this can happen in a matter of only a few million years. There is even some evidence that at least small-scale migration has happened 
within our own solar system as well. Despite the observational biases that favor giant planets, by now our detection methods have become sensitive enough to detect Earth-sized objects as well. By now, we have been reassured that terrestrial planets, some even in their habitable zones of their stars, are quite common. These are the worlds that have the best chance of having liquid water on their surface and a potential for extraterrestrial life.